one. Hi, everyone. Welcome to eLearn Chat, where talk is knowledge. And I'm joined today by the Supreme Talker herself, Dawn J. Mahoney. Hey, Dawn, how are you? <laughs> Hello, the Supreme Talker the Supreme it is. Talker. Huh? Every week it's something. <laughs> <laughs> we, we give you reason for being. Anyway, Dawn, how are you today? I'm pretty well. And yourself? I am doing great. Short of having a couple of small little technical difficulties, we are fine. We're ready to go. And we today are. we've got a great guest we'll introduce in a moment. Here's our intro. Here we are. We're back. Well, Don, today we've got a, a guest who is the CEO of a company called Apprenet, which we just found out means Apprentice Network. His name is Carl Okamoto, and he is the CEO of the company. And they make some really interesting software, actually. And let's introduce. Hi, Don. Hi, um, hi, Carl. How are you today? Rick, I'm well. How are you? I am doing great. And hi, Carl. And I have had the chance to look at some of the software you make and what you do, and it's really interesting. Um, do uh, you want to tell us a little bit about what Apprenet does and what you've done with, with the company? Well, Apprenet is an online platform, as you mentioned. It's a software service that allows you to deliver video role play exercises to large dispersed groups. But there's a trick to that. It's not just delivering it. You actually host it, and uh, there's a lot of flexibility in that, isn't there? Well, I think the solution that we, uh, obviously, role-playing is something people do all the time. Um, what is unique about our service is that it allows you to do it online, it allows you to do it asynchronously, and most importantly, it allows you to do it with large groups of people at the same time. Yeah, it's really rather fascinating, and you don't need any really special hardware or software. You can pretty much do it with, with what you have. I mean, if you have a webcam and, and a microphone, you, you're pretty much ready to run on this, aren't you? Yeah, in fact, uh, if you, you know, have a laptop that has some kind of camera on it, you're good to go. Even if you don't have that, you can use the app that we have on your phone. Uh, okay. Most people have a smartphone these days. So I somehow or another, if you have a way of recording yourself doing a selfie, um, you, can do, you can use a PrentNet. How fabulous. I didn't, I didn't see that you had a phone app yesterday or a mobile app, so I'll have to take another look at your website. Oh, please. And, and I did see some of the demos that you sent me, and I thought they were really good. I mean, they were to the point. They were functional and useful. And, and you know, it's, it reminds me of an old product that I, I used years ago called Dialogue Coach. And I think that was Allen Interactions product, if I'm not wrong. Uh, one of our vendor, one of our customers had it, and we, we did some work on it. And, and, but there were a lot of limitations with the technology back then, and, and, and I don't think they even have that anymore. But... Um, what I like about what you've done is it does use all the current technology. Uh, you have your own tracking system, and um, and by the way, he's not paying us to say this. So um, <laughs> it, it actually, it, I was I was quite intrigued as as to how you can create not only scenarios but really have people integrate. Well, actually, not integrate, but collaborate with the people in the scenarios. In essence, uh, make comments. Um, one of the things that in, was in one of your demos was uh, kind of a restaurant management thing of how to deal with customers and client service. Can you talk a little bit about that one? Sure. I think that's one of my favorite examples of how people have used the platform. Um, in that case, we had a restaurant company that had 85 locations around, literally around the world. Mm -hmm. um, and at each one of those locations, they had three or four people who all shared the same very important job of being the first person you see when you walk in the door, being the host or the hostess. And you know, it's actually, it, it, when you think about it, it's actually one of the more difficult jobs to have in a, in a restaurant context because you're basically out there by yourself. Mm -hmm. right? There's not the usual um, esprit de corps that you have amongst the server crowd or the back of the house crowd that are all cooking together. This person's up there by themselves uh, at any given time uh, dealing with um, probably the, some of the more uh, obnoxious aspects of being in the retail um, food service space. And this restaurant wanted to figure out a way 
to have those folks learn by doing, learn by practicing basic customer service skills. The hallmark of this particular um, uh, chain is hospitality, as they all are, I guess. But that's, that's one of the words they use a lot as part of their um, team self-identification. And so they wanted people to practice being hospitable, being friendly. Uh, and the challenge was how to do that. How do you take someone who sits there by themselves most of the day dealing with the public and give them a chance to practice, but also give them a chance to practice in a way that allowed them to interact with their peers around the country? And so, sorry. Mm -hmm, no, go ahead. Yeah, so the way they did it on our platform is, uh, and the way all of our exercises work, is they created a series of vignettes, scenarios. Uh, typical one would be, uh, let's say you had promised a couple their table at 7.30 because you knew they were going to the theater, and 7.45 rolls around and the table isn't ready yet, and they come back to the podium and they're angry, right? and you have to appease them mm -hmm. some way. And so you take a very short video of that sequence of events, and then at the end of the moment where uh, one of the couple is you know, accusing you of having failed them in some way, it stops and says, so now respond to our guest. And the way the 500 um, hosts and hostesses in this particular uh, use case did that, and the way our system works, is they'd open a camera on their laptop, or again, as I said, you can use your phone, um, and recorded themselves finishing the conversation that this vignette had set up. So they were now allowed to say, you know, I'm so sorry, sir, ma'am, let me uh, see what's happening, let me run back and see what's going on, let me buy you a drink, whatever it was, was their um, uh, answer to this difficult customer service situation. They do that, they record it, they hit go, that recording uploads to the platform, the 499 other recordings by their peers also upload, and then they go through a process of uh, peer review and um, discussion. So they actually do this in real time, like record themselves while they're engaging with the customer? No, or although they could. Uh, we actually have another use case where uh, we were doing teacher training, and in teacher training there's this whole idea of classroom observation, and so we've had people record themselves actually in action. But in the uh, restaurant case, it was um, a hypothetical situation. So they were recording. I figured that, but I thought I'd check in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, uh, I imagine uh, we'd have to get all kinds of consents from the guests if we were going to record them as part of That'd be it. ugly. That wouldn't work. That'd but I think ugly. the neat part was, um, so here you are. You've done this. You've recorded yourself role-playing your job by yourself. But because you're doing this at the same time, uh, roughly the same time, the same week, that your, all your colleagues around the world are doing it, what happens next is you come onto our system and you're shown a random subset of your peers' answers. So in this case, they were all asked to watch three or so of their peers' answers. You can make that number whatever you want. Uh, and so you go to the system, you watch uh, peer number one, you actually give peer number one some feedback because you're given a little rubric with which to uh, give some feedback to your peer. They did that three, four, five times. Some people actually did it 20, 30 times. Uh, I always wonder why they turn into some kind of uh, drinking game or something. <laughs> but, but in any event, uh, you watch some number of times, and um, through that process, you actually get to meet people around the country, right? So And see that the exact same at issues, the exact same approaches, the exact same smiles, if you will, um, exist in New York as they do in Ma as in Madison as they do in uh, Los Angeles and so on. Um, but then the next step is that's when when that was all done. That's when they showed uh, the typical e-learning object where they showed the training video. And I think this is the important part: is we all know that um, the usual training video has a you know thirty percent penetration rate. Um, even if you require people to watch it, they're not really paying attention to it because they're usually not that uh, interesting. Uh, even if you jazz them up, uh, it's just not its not something that they have a lot of motivation to watch. Right? But if you took that same exact video, which is what we did, we took their standard friendliness training video and put it in this third position after people had done an exercise, submitted their own response, and watched their peers' responses, now, because they are very anxious to compare what they did and what they saw their friends do, 
with what the trainer is telling them they ought to have done, they actually now watch with great interest often multiple times. And so that's one of the benefits of um, the platform. Is part, is part of it the, the engagement and the collaboration to a certain point? Right, right. What's also uh, uh, interesting, and we track this, is how often um, your uh, participants um, record, watch, and re-record themselves. Hmm. So the goal here is to get people to practice, right? To role play, to learn by doing. And how do you get people to practice if all you're asking them to do is record themselves in a closet somewhere, right? That sounds not particularly motivating. But because of peer review and because of the fact that this is something a little bit like uh, American Idol, if you will, uh, you're going to perform in front of your friends and you're going to be uh, given feedback by your friends. Now you actually are motivated to do it and to do it as well as you can. And so what we find, which is, I think, the greatest statistic of all, is that on average, a person will record themselves three times before they'll hit submit. Hmm. Right? And so we have no idea how many times they practice in front of the mirror, but the number of times they actually record themselves, go, oh, I don't like that, do it again, right? So you're getting three rounds of practice out of uh, a simple video exercise where they don't even have to be in the same room with each other, they don't have to travel, they don't have to have some um, um, trainer in the room with them. It's because we're our own worst critics, right? So they've probably already done some of the work for themselves before they publish. That's right. And, and I'm, I'm curious, um, do you have to pay to play, so to speak? In other words, are you allowed to um, critique others before you've published your own video, or do you, is it a one-for-one -one relationship, or... That's an excellent question. No, um, you absolutely, it's like a little bit like a video game. If you don't do your job, you can't move to the next stage. So unless you've submitted, you don't get to do peer review. Unless you've completed peer review, you don't get to see the expert answer. Unless you watch the expert answer, you don't get to see the results of peer review. So there's little rewards, if you will, yeah. each stage of the way. And kind of like gamification, so to speak. Yeah. And that's all, those parameters are all settable. Correct? Correct. It's, uh, you can vary it as you wish, but that's the standard configuration. Mm -hmm. What are some of the customizations um, that you have available and or that uh, clients you work with choose well, I in think, addition uh, to the basic settings that you just articulated? Yeah, I think the biggest variable is whether or not you're going to um, have an expert response in the sequence, because remember the way the platform is laid out and the way we just, just described it for the um, restaurant case was there's a, a vignette against which you perform or submit a performance, then there's peer review, and then there's the expert response, right? Now, I've seen uh, those for the first two steps are uh, almost always used. Uh, that's really what makes us special because otherwise you would just simply load video onto a YouTube or Vimeo, right? But... Um, um, whether or not you're going to have an expert response, that's an option. And I, I think the reason why people opt out of using an expert response, and I think this is a great use case, is they use the platform as part of a blended learning solution. Right? So instead of having the video answer, they use the role play exercise up to the point of peer review as pre-work for a live session or a webinar. Okay. And the expert answer comes in that live session, right? It'll come out of the discussion that's synchronous as opposed to just letting people watch some kind of um, training video. Now, I had some, some questions regarding this, and um, I wasn't quite clear on the website just looking. Can you incorporate this as part of other authoring tools, let's say Adobe Captivates or, or Articulate Storylines or Lectoras? Can you, can you make calls to, to your software, to your hosting service through those other systems. Yep. So um, we have an integration, a suite of integration API tools, uh, so uh, pre-built bridges that okay. will allow you to integrate us into an LMS, into another um, learning environment. So, sure. That sounds great. And the, the other question I had was, are there any, LM, I shouldn't say LMS, 
firewall issues. Any any problems getting through the firewall? It sounds like from the client list you have, it, it, they didn't really have any issues. Anything people have to do from a technical point of view to allow the content in, or is it pretty much going through standard open ports and you can just get in? Yeah, no, it depends on the firewall settings and the firewall configurations of the client, right? So if you have a client that has a very locked down mm -hmm. um, internet system, they're going to have to give permission so okay. that people can go out and use um, our system. Okay. But that's a very, that's not hard. It's no. The question is, are they willing to open themselves up that way? Sure. And mo most companies, if they if they see the need, they, they don't have too much of an issue. It just depends right. on the company. Um, I think from a technical perspective, the real question is, do you have adequate bandwidth? Right. So right. do you provide <laughs> your people with the kind of internet speed that allows video to move back and forth? Um, and, you know, so school districts, for example, in some places don't have that kind of bandwidth, and we've had difficulties. Uh, frankly, the phone is probably the more reliable um, device because everyone has pretty decent um, video connectivity for phones. Right. But um, some people's Internet just isn't very fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the uploading piece that gets people caught with, right. the, uh, with the firewall issues. Um, I had a question. It was blowing past me. Oh, it, it, you have the expert review component. Um, do you find that organizations choose to have that um, process overall moderated or is it everybody record by a certain date, I'll review them, and then we'll provide the expert review? I'm curious if they limit, I guess is what I'm asking. Yeah. So, um, I mean, one issue that we are frequently asked about is, so how do we make sure that inappropriate behavior, because this is a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, review system right. in the first instance, right? And so what stops someone from saying inappropriate things, and how do we monitor that? Um, and also, uh, an example that I think is even a variant on this, but a slightly different one is, um, so in pharmaceutical sales, for example, um, there's a great deal of sensitivity about having recordings of employees in the pharmaceutical sales space say things that are, are incorrect, right? So or, they're or very <laughs> hyper about that being on video and then sub being something that litigators will use later, right? And so they want the ability to make sure that they are reviewing everything that's said, right? So that's a more extreme version of the review question. And so one, We've had tens of thousands of people submit in lots of different contexts, ranging from you know law schools to uh, nursing to uh, uh, um, uh, teacher training in all kinds of different contexts. We have yet ever to have a single person say something inappropriate on our platform. That's good. Yeah, which I, <laughs> I, I don't know if that's a guarantee that it will never happen, but it just hasn't happened so far. And I think that's because it's not anonymous. Your face is associated. Yeah. And that's a, you know, that's a, that's a good right. distinction. That's a real important point, too, because <laughs> if you're anonymous, oh, my gosh, what you could probably get. But Your the minute, boss the, is watching this. <laughs> it's true. But the minute you're not anonymous, people go back to being almost civilized. Right. It's an right. In interesting. In fact, uh, professional, I think, is the yes. right, uh, yeah. right word. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so that hasn't been a problem. Um, on the other hand, though, um, the question is, so how much – review by an expert are we expecting to have happen and and you know the original motivation for building this platform besides offering people the opportunity to practice more often than they otherwise might get in their normal uh, training environment was to make that something that did not require more work for the trainer hmm. right because if I ask 500 people to role play and we're doing it in the normal context where that requires 500 pieces of feedback from the trainer well, you can guess how often that's going to happen. Right? Never. Never. Right? Or once in some kind of uh, you know, off-site where they bring in a huge number of people to work on it. Um, on our system, the bargain we make with our uh, users, our, our learners, is not that for each one of you who submits, each one of you will get feedback from an expert, but rather you'll get ex feedback from a peer or group of peers, and if that peer uh, feedback elevates you to the top or, frankly, to the bottom or somewhere in a range of outcomes, some number of you are going to get direct feedback from the trainer. And so a very common uh, promise is, okay, I'll look at the top five or top five and the bottom five, right? Usually only looking at the bottom five to see whether there was some problem. 
but I'll look at the top five and I'll give feedback to them and I'll share that with the entire 500. But 495 of you are not going to get direct feedback. You're going to get to vicariously learn to s based on peer review mm -hmm. and then ultimately on seeing what the top five got told by the trainer. And what's been wonderful uh, and what makes this all work is that we have found that that bargain has been actually more motivating for the 500 learners than the one where you're brought into a room with eight other people and given a chance to um, do role plays in a small group environment with one-to-one -one feedback. They actually like the gamification. That's great. Now, did you want to share your screen and show a little bit or... Um, I'm happy to. I, I just is that going to be a little unwieldy? Um, uh, no, it should be okay. Okay, great. Well, why don't I um, show you the example from the restaurant company okay. we were just talking about? <clears throat> Here, let's see if it's going to work. Um, am I uh, showing see, you my we, screen? Yes, and then your, I'll switch. Yep, right? we see so your here. screen, and then you're, you're switching right now. There you go. And I oh, great. Is it reasonably coherent? Uh, yeah, actually, it's pretty clear. Great. Well, here I'm going to open one up. This is a this is a gr so-called group page. So this is where you would be um, sent either through a link or by your logging on as a learner. And here you'd find your series of exercises. And here I just have a group of sample exercises. Um, but this is the one that was done. Uh, one of the ones that was done for the um, restaurant context. So what they did, as I mentioned, is they log on and then they're shown a um, scenario of some kind. I don't know if you can hear yes. The, uh, yes. the lovely music. Yes, thank you. Would you be able to make a reservation for six? So you can see we try to... Is it possible to get a table in the next 30 minutes by 7.30? We have a... Mimic yes, a conversation where words are being put in the learner's mouth as if they're in front of this couple, right? Mm -hmm. right? And, you know, we know the story here. I don't make you watch the whole thing. But in the end, uh, the table's not ready when it was promised, and they're angry. And um, our actors here do an excellent job of expressing their, uh, their uh, frustration. Um, but in the end, it says, respond to our guest. And so the way you would respond is you open a camera up by either opening the camera that's inside your uh, laptop, or as I mentioned, uh, you have other options as to uh, uh, pull down an app on your phone. So there I am. Hello. Yep. And so I would, I would record myself um, uh, responding. So I'm so sorry. Let me buy you a drink, whatever my mm -hmm. answer would be. My uh, colleagues around the country, in this case around the world, would do the same. And when everyone's done, so let's say we say your answer has to be done the first week of the month, uh, uh, that that first stage, the challenge stage, would end, and we would be all given then access to so-called peer review, stage two, right? So stage two doesn't open until stage one is shut, and as we mentioned earlier, uh, the general default rule is I can't move to stage two unless I've done the chore of, that's asked of me in stage one, mm -hmm. right? And I uploaded a video, so I get to go to peer review. In peer review, I'm then shown a uh, random subset of my peers' answers. So, uh, Sir, madam, I do apologize. The manager is aware of the situation. So you can see this gentleman is obviously in the manager's office in the back of the restaurant yeah, using... Some his jacket behind him. <laughs> right, right. He's using the, the computer that's at the, in the back of the house. Um, I, what I love is we have a really good solution for tablets. So uh, we love it when restaurants, which are really into tablets these days, use tablets and because you can then really have fun with it, right? Sit at the table, right? Make it into a real game. But he's in the back of the room. I would then, you know, fill out the rubric, tell him what I thought about his performance. I can give him some direct comments. I can timestamp it so that it's relevant to wherever I was when I was watching and so on. And I submit that. I do that the required number of times, so three, four, five. And then when I've done that, my next stage is open. And that stage is expert response in this case. Again, it's optional, as we mentioned. So here, uh, this is not their actual training video. Uh, we just put in a place saver, but you get the idea. Right, it's a, uh, you know, the standard. Customers don't ask for money. Cash check. Could you put this up? 
But we do have a cool other option. This is my favorite uh, solution for this is instead of using a um, canned um, you know video of some kind you can go here and you grab this link right right here and you email that to an expert in your world right mm -hmm. so let's say there were a 30-year veteran who's the expert at you know de-escalating the angry customer <laughs> And uh, what would happen is that link would then go to their phone, they click on it, and it would present to them the original problem. And then at the end, it would say, are you ready to give your answer? If you said yes, uh, you click it again, and it would open the camera up in their phone or on their computer, and they get to record how they would have done it. And when they hit go, it will uh, populate um, that... Uh, expert page for everybody right so that's a so suddenly their answer would show up here for everyone and, and I it think sits that's a there cool and waits for them to log in and see it or does it push to them saying go look at something now yeah so every step along the way as a learner you're going to get emails so okay. and, and you can set it up to be as an annoying or not annoying as you'd like <laughs> Um, so we literally can you can set it up so they get you know 12 hours 24 hours before uh, it tells them when comments have come in on their video. It tells them when they've gotten graded. It, it, it's, you have all kinds of options to use um, email. It also reports up to the instructor, and you can also set it to report up to the general manager, to the regional vice president, to the CEO if you want, with different levels of granularity. You, know, you can get reports on individuals, on stores, on regions, on the company as a whole. All that kind of stuff is built into, the, into it. Um, and then finally, uh, maybe most importantly, it reports back to the learner themselves. So here you get to see who the top rated um, peers are. Here you get to see if the instructor has featured anyone. So a thing I like to do is to go look for answers that were interesting but didn't get rated uh, by the peers as top and feature them. Right? And I'll explain to the group why. I'll go, hey, you, you didn't love... Lucille, but Lucille did this really interesting thing. Let me point it out. There's a kind of wall feature that lets you, you know, have a track of the back and forth, whether it's most recent or what the instructors had to say or what outside experts had to say. Um, I'll just mention quickly because we're getting in the weeds, but uh, there's a whole system that lets you invite outsiders to chime in hmm. on different submissions. And so, for example, if you had, you know, your regional vice presidents and they weren't in your store, but you wanted them to look at some of the submissions, there's a process that lets them do that. Uh, and you can manage that uh, as the instructor. How does a client, how does a client uh, register their students or their employees? Is it just a typical, like an LMS registration? Yep. So uh, if you are integrated, there's a, you know, single sign-on <coughs> back and forth. If you're not, you can simply have people create accounts on their own. Okay. Um, it's uh, pretty straightforward. I love this. I think so many organizations are trying to build things like this on their own. Um, it'd be smart to just hire you. <laughs> well, don't <laughs> hire me, but um, be uh, try out the platform. It's a it's a software service, which means you just go to the web and sign up. And uh, obviously, I we provide a little more help than that, but. Um, uh, you can get a trial just by going to the website. So I, mean, I don't want to turn this into an ad, but that's that's that's. I know people want to know that though. Is, um, software as a service is a big deal. So and free trials are important. And, and one of the things I like is that, and w in the scenario you mentioned, you could have people who review something, and then you have a master who says, you know, you missed a couple things. Right. And and the reviewers, that's a very good way to train people who are reviewing other people because a lot of times they get into the same, ban the same bandwagon of, well, we all see it this way, but they're not looking at something different. And that alter you know, alternative view every so often is what kind of gives them that whack of enlightenment and they go, oh, never thought of that, which is valuable. One of, those, one of the most important learning moments in the sequence, besides you know the performance by yourself of, of your answer, is... When you are performing peer review and applying that rubric to your colleagues' mm -hmm. answers, that's probably 
I mean, it's definitely more valuable for you as the learner in applying the rubric because you are now uh, embedding into your process what are the stated learning objectives if the rubric is well written, right? That's probably more valuable for you than it is for actually the person you're grading, yep. right? Because mm -hmm. it's a significant reinforcement of whatever it is you're trying to teach. Do you front load a, or a lot of that? Do you have um, uh, questionnaires that you provide to um, the clients to kind of kick them off in that direction? So I, I think they... one of the great arts that um, really someone has to bring to our platform is the art of rubric creation. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. The, the first art is the art of scenario building, right? We've seen uh, some quite not so good uh, vignettes versus very excellent ones, and we endeavor to explain what the differences are. Um, so, like, are they realistic? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, we are big <laughs> fans of making your scenarios realistic, um, but there's an art to that, and and we have not really figured out how to automate that art. So we do rely on the whoever it is who's using the software to have some um, instructional design uh, talent. Um, and then on the rubric side, we are working very, very hard to make rubric builder technology that really makes it better than, well, that makes it assisted. But I also think we'll never get to the point where, in the end, there doesn't have to be someone who's an um, instructional designer behind all, every exercise, and, and we can't solve for that not being there. Yeah, you'd have to come up with a thousand recursive questions behind every set of questions. I think it's valuable to have a person involved, That's not right. just a machine. Yeah, and a domain expert, which we're not. We're we're just a we have a method. Um, we don't have any idea how to teach customer service skills. <laughs> yeah, and one of the nice things is it's it's a very organic approach, which which again people I think would feel fairly comfy with because they don't have to really learn a new tool that much as much as. Uh, figure out how to write the scenarios, figure out how to act or what they, whatever they need to do. Yeah. And, and most companies do have a set of scenarios that they already rehearse and go through, but this would make it more consistent. Oh, That's I, what I, I would like. Sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. What were we saying, Don? I said that's what I would have preferred back in the day when I was doing uh, call center coaching, call coaching. It would have been nice to have more standards um, because my coaching was different than somebody else's, this would build a standardization right. in. Yeah, we we what's, we um, are often asked by call center folks, why don't I use the dialogue uh, product or something similar, which is audio? Do I need video? And and can we? Uh, do you have the audio only option? And our answer is one. Yes, it's called put a piece of tape over the camera. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <laughs> uh, the serious answer is uh, there's a lot of literature out there that basically says that you cannot sound friendly no matter how hard you try if you're not smiling. That's true. And, and um, so I think the idea that you train call center people without letting them watch themselves while they're talking is a mistake. And so we think our solution is you know, equally powerful for people who sit in, sit in a chair you know, talking on the phone. Yeah, and I think part of the problem with a lot of call centers is they only deal with voice. Um, so I think that's the, the approach is we deal with voice so you don't ever have to look at anybody. But it's good to have, have a feeling when they're hearing somebody also seeing what they look like. And you can tell when they have the smiles, when they're unhappy, the breathing patterns. There's a lot of things that are giveaways to how they actually react to another person, to a call, to a situation which is either tense, happy. You could tell in the voice a whole mess of things. And... Yeah. But it's nice to, especially for new agents or people who haven't done this before, is to reinforce it with the video. So they actually see the way they're reacting when they actually get on a phone and, and the phone is obviously dark, all they hear is a voice. They may be able to relate that pattern of voice to what they remember in videos. So that could be actually pretty useful. Yeah, I have a friend who uh, ran a call center business, and he first thing he did was put mirrors on top of everyone's computer. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. That's an old trick. Yep. 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 Yeah. yeah, it works for a while. Then you have to remind them the mirror is there um, <laughs> because yeah. it's easy to ignore. But, uh, yeah, most call centers have a call maintenance system that comes with the call coaching component. So that's why people do the voice only. But um, 
I would say that a large population of the um, people that are using or would use this technology are very comfortable taking selfies and self videos. So um, I think that's it's beneficial because that's what they're used to already. Yeah. I would say the the rest of us are probably a little slower to adopt. Um, or adapt to that, but I think there's, especially in the restaurant environment that you spoke of and many others that we could think of, the sales coaching, uh, they are going to be face-to-face, -face, so it's there's a whole lot of benefit to seeing yourself on camera and how your facial expressions and whether your eyes smile, too, yeah, that's all true. matter. I, I would so get fired at a restaurant. Just <laughs> so get fired. <laughs> I'm just not going to even touch Don't that Don't even one. go there, right? No, no, no. <laughs> uh, you're rude, huh? Get out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just not Call gonna... that a tip? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Take your tip with you, yeah. <laughs> Uh, my dad, my dad, somebody my, questioned the amount of tips, so I'd probably these days be fired if I worked in a restaurant, too. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. My dad, when he first came to the country, he, he immigrated, well, we immigrated uh, in 1957 from Argentina. And my dad got a job at first working in a restaurant. He lasted one whole day. I was three years old. I just remember the story. But... He, I guess somebody gave him a hard time. He was really jerky about it. So he wound up with a plate of spaghetti on his head, and my dad walked out. I went, that was really good work. Good job. <laughs> Great customer service. Um, can't say he was necessarily wrong, but <laughs> it doesn't bring a lot of return business. <laughs> wonder no. what would happen if that showed up on Opera Net. Uh, I know. Yeah, it could. In our training video, this yeah. is not... This is what you do not do. This <laughs> do is not the before picture. The yeah. <laughs> of course, when I grew up in New York, that wasn't uncommon to get thrown out of a restaurant, so it could have happened. There you go. You know, that soup there Nazi thing wasn't so far from the truth. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was based on a real place. So. <laughs> I think it was. <laughs> the place exists, yeah. Hey, when, I was, so. when I was about 10 years old, I remember there was a deli about a block from school, and we'd go get sandwiches or something at lunch, and... That was maybe about 12. And I walked in, and at the moment, I wasn't really sure what I wanted. So by the time I got to the counter, I was like, well, uh, and the guy goes, next. I went, wait, wait, no, next. Get out, kid. You don't know what you want. Next. <laughs> and I, I had to go eat somewhere else. It was, it was like, get lost. No soup for you. Yeah, no soup for you. No sandwich for you. <clears throat> so, yeah, I, I experienced that. I learned how to order quickly. So, anyway. Well, bringing us back around to Carl is there anything else you'd like us to know about your product or um, how to how to get in touch with you well so uh, just the uh, prennet.com um, so a p p two p's r e two n's and then e t dot com uh, is where to go there's um, all the there's you can just self serve a trial you can reach out to us there's a contact page um, so that's I think the best way to go. Um, there are a lot of, if you go slash videos or pull down on the top the links and go to videos, there are several videos that show different um, demonstrations, including um, another version of that uh, customer service one. We have one for nursing education, for teacher training. Um, there's a great uh, video interview with some of the hosts and hostesses at um, the restaurant company talking about their experience with the platform right. and and really how it engendered community um, among them and how they they were developing a a sense of belonging to the larger cohort of 500 people that they actually had a lot in common with even mm -hmm. though they never saw each other and that was really uh, powerful for us we we're excited that that worked that's good mm -hmm. And uh, will we see you at any, um, it's, it's conference season soon, yeah. so will you be at any conferences? I'm uh, coming to Learning Solutions in um, Orlando in March, I believe it is. Oh, okay. Um, so, You'll see yeah. several of my friends. I won't be there, but. Oh, uh, I think I will be there, so hopefully I'll see you there. Yeah, that would be great. I'm, I'm supposedly giving a talk on peer review, so that'll be fun. Great. Very good. Quite a few of our um, following will be at LSCon, either presenting or attending or both. So, uh, yeah, everybody stop by the booth. Yep. Well, we are at the end of our time. Carl, really appreciate you coming on today and sharing your solution and your software. And um, I'm sure there'll be questions afterwards. We'll post your links to the show notes afterwards so people can get to the website easily, too. 
And uh, this should be up probably a little bit later today. And um, we'll send you a link once it's up. Awesome. Well, I appreciate the so opportunity. Much. Yeah, thanks for being here. And Don, as always, I'll see you actually tomorrow, Don. Yep. You can't get rid of me that easily. <laughs> but <clears throat> uh, everyone, have a great day. And we'll see you tomorrow on eLearn Chat. Take care. Bye-bye.